Hello, my name is Chantal, I'm a visual artist and I welcome you to my very first painting process video where I show you how I color my um, drawings in Photoshop. When I create a painting, I use a mixture of pencil drawing and digital coloring. So I would call it a mixed media piece. I like to do thumbnails in Photoshop before I start my drawing on paper. Photoshop gives me the opportunity to um, make changes in a rough sketch more than I could do on paper. I can transform parts or I could mirror my composition and see if it's balanced. And uh, this is a really nice way to start out a painting. You can make everything really the way you want and tweak it before you go on paper where you're not that flexible anymore. So. After creating the basic composition for a piece in Photoshop, I um, get a piece of paper and I stick it to my screen using tape and I transfer it on the paper using a pencil. So I use my screen as a light box, basically. I will show you my process uh, of drawing in another video. This one will focus just on the coloring process in Photoshop. So after I'm done with my pencil drawing, I will scan the drawing at a very high resolution to make sure that I can make prints of that later on. So the first thing to do when you have your scanned drawing opened in Photoshop is to free the drawing from the background. The cool thing is I can now paint underneath the drawing and color it in. So the first step in every coloring process of my drawings is to fill in the basic shapes of a painting just using any color. I'm not very picky in the beginning because I know that the colors will change a lot during the painting process. It's just important for me to have the basic shapes down so I can control the composition again, see if everything works or tweak it a little bit. But um, yeah, that usually helps to start like that. After I have done that, I start tweaking the colors, adding smaller shapes, tweaking the colors again using gradients. I really like to incorporate gradients in my coloring process because I think uh, color gradients give a really nice flow to a painting. So I do that quite a lot. Yeah, so I usually start with very muddy and desaturated colors and over the course of the process of painting my image, the colors get more and more saturated. In this case, I started with kind of grayish, brownish colors and as you can see already, it goes into a very saturated, reddish, pink kind of direction which really reflects the overall feel that I wanted to convey uh, with the artwork. It usually happens that at some point in my painting process I don't really like the overall colors anymore or I'm not sure whether it's working or not and there are a few things that I like to do to help me out of that. One of that is to use gradient maps. Um, you can put a gradient map over your painting and um, try different color combinations in that gradient map that you really like and then using the blending modes to um, find something that maybe inspires you in another direction or gives you an idea of where it can go. Uh, play with the opacity of that and I usually find something that gives uh, the whole image a new spark and new motivation for me to keep going. I don't really like adding new elements to my paintings and I usually have a rule for myself to never really do that if I haven't planned an element or object from the beginning that should be in the painting. 
In this painting I added the blossoms on the bottom. I usually don't like to add new elements because um, they don't really add to the idea. In the beginning you have the idea what the painting should be about and in the thumbnail phase you really think about what should be in the painting to convey what you want to say. So. Um, when you feel the need to add something later on, at least for me, it usually is because I am very unsatisfied with the stage the painting is in right now and that's normal for every painting that I ever do. The solution for that is almost never to add something new to the painting. Um, in this case, I did add the blossoms on the bottom of the painting but I kept them because I think it, it matched the overall theme of the painting and the feel of her being outside and nature and spring. So I usually delete it after spending one or two hours incorporating it. So um, it makes things worse usually. Yeah, when I paint, there's a lot of trial and error. I try things out, I try colors out, or maybe I um, transform or tweak a shape a little bit. In most cases I don't really know how the painting really looks in the end. I have an idea of the direction I want to go in, but it never turns out as I imagine in the beginning, and I don't really try to have a fixed vision of how the painting should look in the end. I really like to be surprised by what happens when I paint. Brushes. I don't really like to use many brushes. I feel like when I use a lot of brushes with different textures my painting looks all over the place kind of and I don't really like that. I really like to create texture in my painting with my hand really. I like to use only a round brush that has a slight rough texture to it but not too much and that's the only brush I really use. Although I sometimes use an airbrush if I want a very very soft shading but that's really rare. Uh, I really like uh, to use this one round brush uh, most of the time and I create textures by cross hashing or by um, just the way that I apply the color with this um, brush. It creates a texture by itself. I also have a lot of scans of different papers. Um, there's nothing on the papers, I just scan them in to get the texture that I then um, put on top of my painting using overlays so I have the texture in my painting in the end and it, it gives uh, the painting an overall more traditional look I would say and um, it also softens transitions between different shapes. I really like that a lot. Often when you don't have that you see all the little um, uh, imperfections in your shading and in your uh, application of the color in your painting and when you put um, a little texture on top of it in the end it looks really smooth and intended and finished. Um, so that's a nice way to yeah, finish a painting. So this was my painting process. I hope it wasn't too confusing for you and it helped you to get inspired. In case you are interested in getting more insights on how I work, you can check out my Patreon page or follow me on social media. Limited edition prints of Sparrow Princess are available in my store as well. All the links for that are in the description below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please write a comment below the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye!